I've tested all the latest games on this MacBook. I'm gonna show you guys what is the best model to buy for gaming and even for work. But in this video, I will be mostly talking about the gaming. And uh, during a, like a police chase, you'll see that even with them shooting at me and a lot of action going on, the frame rates don't drop. Plus, Grand Theft Auto is kind of an older game now, and it, it, I mean, it's still, people still play it. So this is what the graphics is. See, NVIDIA PCSS, if you reduce that to uh, softest or softer, the, gra the shadows won't look nearly as good, but those, the game will give you an extra five to 10 FPS. So I have that enabled right now, still relevant, but even in first person, the, the, the FPS still stays up kind of near the high 40s. Sims 3, everything's maxed out. Game runs pretty good, I didn't run into any issues. The only time I ran issues was in viewing other people's homes. Not my home specific, my home's fine, I'm in the hundreds of FPS. When I zoom out I get around 50 FPS. <laughs> Overall though, it seems to work pretty good. And then I don't know what that thing that just appeared is. What is that? Do you guys know what that is? Leave a comment down below. So here I am zooming in on somebody else's house. It's all laggy and choppy. Why is that? I, I don't really know. I guess the game is older, so it's not very well optimized. Play games on this laptop on your lap and you'll be okay. But after about an hour of gaming, you're going to want to put it on a table. Go. So we're playing Battlefield. We're getting around 40 something FPS in the single player. And uh, I start joined a multiplayer game, decided, you know what, I need to up the graphics to Ultra. And running at Ultra at 9, 1920 by 1080, get around 30 FPS. Drop it down from Ultra to either high or medium, and you can achieve roughly around 40 FPS. So here right now I have everything set to medium, 1680 by 1050. And I'm getting good, good FPS. I'm getting around 40. Sometimes I might drop to like 35, but I'm getting around 40, 50, and even in intense battle zones. Uh, running at 16 by 1050 is probably the way you want to go at medium to high graphics, and you can enjoy the game. If you want to be able to run Fallout at 1080p graphics, everything on high, you should upgrade to the 460. In this particular video, I'm only doing the four, the 455, and it doesn't really run with that good with higher resolution games um, with the settings up that high, just because it only has two gigabytes of VRAM. So again, I only picked this model because it was cheaper, but it's really only a hundred dollar difference. And if you're already buying a MacBook Pro, I don't think it's that bad of a sacrifice. Consider getting it. And we're going to go ahead and set up the settings for League of Legends. So we have the max resolution, which is like 2K or 3K-ish res, which is really, really high. We have the very high on everything, the shadows and all that. It's looking really, really good. Mm -hmm. But we're getting around 120, 130 FPS. And um, I tested this earlier in the 5v5, and there just wasn't any issues. I still maintained up in the hundreds of frames. Sometimes I dropped down to 80 during an intense fight. But uh, overall, it ran really, really well. I really didn't have too many issues playing Counter-Strike Global Offensive. It's kind of an old game now, and it's going to run pretty good on most systems. In this one here, we're basically testing it out with uh, 1080p and high everything. If you want a little bit of extra frames, you can run at 1680 by 1050. But it really just depends. It's, it's really just up to you. But in actuality, this is the $2,700 model. You can get the cheaper model and still play all your favorite games and enjoy them. Uh, keep watching, guys. I'm telling you, the results are actually pretty impressive. This On the spec sheet, this video card, the 455, doesn't look that good, but it actually performs quite well. City Skylines ran pretty good. Last time I played this game was on the 2015 MacBook Pros, and boy, this game ran terrible. Anyway, we've got a fast forward right now. We're getting about hundreds of frames, and everything's on high, 1080p resolution. Looking real, real good. This game's actually pretty fun. I was a big fan of SimCity 4 Deluxe Edition. I still play that game to this day. 
I haven't really given this this game a shot yet. And there's also Cities XL, which I've been really wanting to play. If you guys if you guys have played those games, let me know in the comment section below because I'm looking for a new city building game. All right, here we have Sims 4. Sims 4 runs better than Sims 3. We have the graphics all maxed out, 1920 by 1080 p This is with all of the expansions, by the way. So even with all the expansions, you're getting around 50 to 40 FPS. When you're on the map, on the, on your own building, everything's fine. But when you're kind of zooming in and out of like the whole city, that's where you're gonna see some lag. We dropped down to like 30 something a second ago. I'm making her eat a bunch of cake. So you can see how much cake she can eat. <laughs> All right, here we are playing some Smite. I have everything maxed out, 1920 by 1080p. All the graphical settings are on highest. Game runs pretty good. You're not gonna have anything to worry about with Smite. Here we have World of Tanks. Right now I have it on the maximum details, 1920 by 1080p. And this is that setting that just has all the graphics just all the way up. Game runs pretty good, you have around 40 FPS. If you want, you can drop the graphics down to high and you'll jump from 40 FPS to about 60 or more. Overall, even with everything on maximum, I didn't have any issues at all. I enjoyed it. I even ended up winning this battle too, which is pretty awesome. Here I'm just driving around in circles, allowing them to shoot at me as as uh, the three tanks behind me are attacking them, so I'm just distracting them basically. You want to dual boot from uh, Mac OS uh, and have games, and, and like me, I, for instance, I want to have Windows and, I, and I'm a content creator, so I need that extra storage. Definitely opt for the extra storage option if you can. I think it's totally worth it. However, upgrading the CPU is a total waste no. of money. Don't bother. The extra gigahertz really aren't going to help. It's already quad, so you don't need to worry too much about it. Okay, so when it comes to Rust, you're gonna to wanna to decrease the resolution as much as possible when gaming. Here you saw that I had it at 1440 by 900 and I just, I couldn't do it. I had to drop down to 1280. So here I spawned, this guy was just, just trying to kill me. He was just so determined and eventually he ended up killing me. So wasn't able to kill him. Uh, here I discovered a uh, base that was being raided. Thought I'd go take a look, see what's going on there. Uh, I wanted to see what the performance would be like during a raid. Uh, I had to decrease my graphics quality to basically zero to kind of maintain in the 30s. Uh, I kept some of the higher quality graphics um, like the lens dirt and the ambient occlusion on, but if you turn those off, you can get higher frame rates. Uh, and then they found out that I was there and then they killed me. But generally when nothing's going on, you can have about 30 FPS. It's just not very fun to play though. You're gonna have to decrease the graphics quality more if you want to be able to play this game. All right, let's talk about Team Fortress 2. So this game runs flawless. You don't need to worry about it at all. I have the resolution up pretty high, 16 by 1050, high textures, high shadows, everything's pretty high. Don't worry about playing this game. Take a look at the settings here and uh, yeah, it runs really good. I'm even in a full server playing two for it and uh, I'm getting around anywhere from 50 to 100 FPS. Pretty good. Playing on a max server with max players, 30. 32 players and uh, it's doing pretty good. All right, now how on earth do I test Gary's mod? So I decided, you know what, I'll spawn a bunch of barrels, I'll see if I can crash the game, make it lag up, make it freeze up. Can't really get the game to slow down too much. Gary's mod's been out for a while, it's a lot like Team Fortress 2, fairly optimized. If you like to play Gary's mod, I would not worry about running it on this system. You're not gonna have any issues. If you have a better way for me to test this, let me know, I'll maybe do a retest and then we can see if we can do a better test. All right, so I have most of the eye candy churned up and I'm having the resolution at 1680 by 1050. It's pretty good, you can do 1080p res if you want, but I keep it at 1680 by 1050 because I want the frame rate to stay smooth. And as you can see, it actually works really, really well. I did not encounter any issues with this game. Max graphics, no AA, keep the ambient inclusion low or off, and you're gonna run pretty good. In most cases, I'm getting around 80 to 50 FPS. Sometimes I'm getting like 40. Might drop down to 35 and 25 if I get hit by like a missile or something, but usually that doesn't last very long and it doesn't feel too laggy. 
Um, overall, it doesn't matter if you're in air, on land, the game runs pretty good. I don't think you guys are gonna have any issues playing Battlefield. You know, basically highest in ultra graphical settings. We're playing at uh, 1280 by 800, and it's running smooth. We're getting a good like 50 FPS, 40 FPS, sometimes 60 and 70, depending on where you're at. And we're just gonna go ahead, run around for a little bit, and I wanna show you what happens when we take that resolution and bump it up a notch to 1080p. 1080p, it brings us down to about 29 FPS, sometimes 30, sometimes 35. If you put it at 1680 by 1050, the FPS should be playable. But uh, anyway, I turned the resolution down from native to 1080p, kept the graphical settings on high. Changing the draw distance doesn't seem to affect the game much. Here I am just running around, looking around, trying to find something to do. This game's kind of cool. I mean, it's kind of like Rust, it's kind of like Ark Survival, but it seems kind of more boring. Like, this is a really populated server. I didn't see a single person in this game. Next on high, and we're gonna run at 1080p while playing Call of Duty. So this game didn't have any issues while running at these resolutions. It did dip to about 45, sometimes 40 FPS, and didn't really get any closer to 30 than that, but it ran decent. I didn't really have too many problems with it. Um, the only thing that I had some issues with was finding a server because people don't really play this game that often anymore So for whatever reason I just couldn't even find a way to connect But uh, anyway, when, once I got in I enjoyed it. It was fun and playable Let's talk about Ark So it doesn't matter how you spin it. Ark Survival is a really really hard game to run Regardless of what graphical setting I put it on, the game just doesn't work right. It doesn't, doesn't run good at all. If you want, you can play the game at uh, 30 to 40 FPS if you decrease the resolution super, super low, or if you decrease the quality to almost lowest possible. It's an extremely hard game to run, even for people with extremely powerful gaming rigs and powerful gaming laptops. Take a look at like my Alienware review, for instance, uh, of how I tried to play Ark Survival on the Alienware you know, 13, and I tried to play it on the Alienware 15 and 17. It just, it struggles to run this game, and it's mostly because the game is really just not optimized. And yes, I understand they're indie developers and all that, but it just doesn't run very good. Um, if you want to run the game, you should play it on a desktop. StarCraft ran surprisingly good. I have everything maxed out. A resolution at 1680 by 1050 still looks great, still plays really, really well. So here I am expanding my bases. I got some barracks built, and I'm going to make a small army of maybe 50 guys and see if I can go blow up one of their bases. At 1080p, you're not going to have any issues playing Diablo 3. It's now a fairly dated game, kind of like StarCraft 2 and World of Warcraft. Pretty much any system can run this game as long as you have fairly moderate specifications. You should be able to play the game and enjoy it. Here I am running around, killing some uh, creeps and some, and some zombies, and really not running into any issues whatsoever. So I don't think you guys need to worry about this game. So in a lot of my tests, you guys always tell me to go somewhere where it's very populated when testing World of Warcraft. I can't figure out for the life of me how to move around and navigate within World of Warcraft. How do you go to a more populated zone? I just, I don't know how to do it. I have the graphics maxed out, I have the resolution maxed out here as well, you know, and regardless of what you do, the game runs well. I'm certain if you go into a heavy populated zone, you're gonna have to probably tear down to 1680 by 1050 at a minimum, because I know that in MMOs, games can get really, really intense sometimes. If you guys know how to do it, let me know so I can recreate the video and add that portion. How do you move from beginning phase of the game to a heavily populated area? Maybe I just, I mean, I just don't know how to navigate the menus. This is a game called Astroneer. Really cool, one of my subscribers asked me to play this. And uh, I guess you're basically just an astronaut. And uh, here we are in the launch pad. Graphics are all maxed. We're at, we're at 1080p right now, getting a good 60 FPS. I've seen it drop, I think, down to like 40 something, 43, 42, but it runs great overall. 
I like how you can deform the ground and there's like physics too with it. Kind of neat. I haven't played too much of it though, but I think I'm definitely going to try it out some more. Had a hard time figuring out how to build in this game. How do you actually build in it? So we're trying 1080p with high everything, no anti-aliasing. It lagged pretty bad, so I tried 1680 by 1050. Still lagging pretty bad, didn't get that much better FPS. After that, I decided, you know what, let's try 1280 by 800, because every time you lower the res, it's just gonna look substantially better. And I like to keep my textures and my shadows on high usually. Now, if you wanna play at 1920 by 1080 p keep graphics at medium, and you can have higher res, or you can have lower res and high graphics. It really just depends on how you wanna do it. Uh, me personally, I always opt for high resolution textures as opposed to just resolution alone because the screen is already pretty small, 15 inch really not that big. So having 1920 by 1080p, who needs that? Why would I even need that? So anyway, it, it runs pretty decent. I'm pretty impressed with the performance. The remake for Doom has been pretty awesome. I love this game's graphical art style. It looks amazing. I have the graphics all on medium to low resolution on 1280 by 800. You really can't play this game on any higher graphics just because, you know, when explosions happen and the maps are just so detailed, the game's the game is like an 80 gig gig gigabyte game, so it takes up so much resources um, in the textures and, and your RAM and all that. So I was able to enjoy it on medium and fairly low res, but you could always put the graphics even lower and run it at around 60 to 70 FPS. I always like to try to find that nice balance you know, of FPS and graphical quality, and I think I found it with medium graphics and 1280 by 800. Natural Selection 2, one of my favorite games. We have all the graphics here up, everything's looking amazing, except the only thing we did here is we have the 1280 by 800 resolution. Now that is the golden resolution if you want the game to run right and look pretty darn good. If you want, you can also up the resolution to 1680 by 1050, but you may want to turn some things down like atmospherics or uh, anti-aliasing. And if you remove uh, ambient occlusion and decrease some of the lighting, you can run at 1080p, no problem, 60 FPS. Overall, this game runs great, looks great, and is definitely playable on this laptop. Here we have Civ 5 running it at 1920 by 1080. Everything's maxed out. You're not gonna have any issues running this game at all. I went ahead and tried to explore more of the map to see what would happen as I explore the map. Will it get more glitchy? Will it get more laggy? Turns out that uh, this game just doesn't bug it at all. Maybe like on the MacBook Pro 13 inch, this is something you'd wanna take a look at. I've tested it on the 2015 version and I didn't have any issues. It seemed to run decent. And then I've also tested it on the MacBook Air as well and kind of had some slowdowns, but it really wasn't that bad. Overall, for civilization games, you should not have to worry whether they're gonna run good on your MacBook or not, regardless of which MacBook you have. Even the 12 inch MacBook runs it pretty good. All the graphics set to low, but I'm running at 1080p resolution and I'm getting hundreds of frames. So I decided, you know what, let's bump this graphical quality up to high and ultra to see how well it runs. And we get like 25 FPS. So then I dropped it down from 1080 to uh, um, 1650. Uh, by by 1050 and it just it runs a little bit better you get about 10 extra frames mm.
35 to 40 FPS. Sometimes I might drop to, to 30, but I really like keeping that detail high, so I am gonna keep it higher. If you want, you can reduce the graphics quality to medium to high. The game will still look excellent, and you'll have 60 FPS at 1080p. War Thunder plays very similar to World of Tanks, except I think it runs a little bit better, even. So here we are, maximum detail, 1920 by 1080p. We're driving around, and we're just, just flipping around here. This is the beginning of the game. As you can see, I'm getting around 60, sometimes 70 FPS. The lowest I think I've seen a drop was around 40 to 45, so it still runs pretty good, even in intense moments. If you guys want me to test a specific game on this MacBook, leave a comment down below and I'll see if I can get it tested for you guys. Ooh. I am in GTA, I have all the graphics turned up, max except for the resolution. I keep the resolution around 1280 by 800 and I can use anti-aliasing to smooth out the edges and still get good frame rates. As you can see, I'm, I'm staying up in the 40 FPS and I have all of the eye candy. I even have the ultra realistic shadows enabled by Nvidia, which makes it look really, 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 really nice. So after this, I'm gonna show you what it's like walking around outside, what it's like first person, and what it's like driving. You can also see that there is no thermal throttling at all while playing the game. And that's something that basically most laptops, when they get really hot, they slow down the specs and then your frame rate drops. Well, you're not gonna see anything like that in the MacBook Pro 2016, 15 inch. All right, so here I am just kind of walking around. Some guy attacks me and uh, yeah, kicks me in the nuts. God, man, this guy, he just randomly attacked me too. I was like, what is this? So I just jump all over him, tripped all over him. It's kind of funny. And uh, then he like kicks me, <laughs> it kicks me in the back. It doesn't end well for this guy. I pull out and just runs really, really well. I was actually quite surprised how fun the first person mode is in, in Grand Theft Auto. I just, I thought it would maybe be kind of like a gimmick, but it's actually really fun to toggle. Here I am playing Far Cry 3. I gotta admit, I did not think this game was gonna run at all. I'm like, you know what, Far Cry 3, AAA title. Looks a lot like Crisis 3. Here we're running all graphics maxed out. Uh, and then resolution at 1080p, and I gotta say, I was pretty impressed. Runs really well, and this kill cam is off the hook. Shows like three different frames from where you got shot. Um, shows the the bullet path and all of that. It's like really impressive. I guess Team Fortress 2 and Counter-Strike pretty much have this now also as well, but it's just kind of cool to see the 455 or 460, which should you get? It's only about $100 more, and it'll give you an extra two gigabytes of video RAM. Now, I would say the $100, in my opinion, is worth it. However, in this particular video, I opted not to get it because I wanted to see if I come with, with the cheapest MacBook Pro 15 inch that would run all my games and still be a really good, you know, powerhouse, workhouse device where I can get things done and still game. If you look here, the only main difference is that you have some shading units and you have the extra two gigabytes of VRAM. The VRAM will be more useful when you're gonna be running at higher resolutions like 1920 by 1080. As you see, a lot of the games I've tested here are running at uh, 1280 by 800 and 1680 by 1050. With some optimizations, I can definitely get the games to run at 1080, but not with all the eye candy. If you want the eye candy, jump up to the more expensive 460 model because I believe it actually will be worth it. But if you don't get it, it's not a deal breaker. You don't need to spend that much money on the device. And definitely don't forget to check out some of the links uh, for these products, which I will be talking about right now. Links will be posted in the description below. So let's take a look at the first product. All right, so hands down, the number one thing you're gonna need to get for your MacBook Pro is gonna be an SSD drive. This little external SSD drive is gonna be able to store movies, games, photos, anything you want, you can store it on this drive. And the reason it's important to get is because it's just a matter of time before you run out of storage. The 2016 MacBook Pros, they really just, they don't come with a lot of storage, so getting a little drive like this 
It's highly recommended. If you can't afford that particular one, we also have more affordable variants from Seagate or even uh, Western Digital. But again, the reason I showed the SSD is due to its reliability and how fast it is. Uh, when you're gonna be loading games or watching movies or moving files, it's just gonna be way, way quicker. So try to stay away from the hard drive disks. Only opt for the SSD variant because you just really can't compare them. Once you've got enough storage, you're really gonna wanna get yourself some kind of sleeve. Here's a particular sleeve that I reviewed last year. It's still one of my favorite sleeves because of its simplicity. It only has you know, just a few pockets and just this little Velcro-like uh, enclosure. Other brands have also made different types of sleeves and cases for your MacBook Pro, so definitely be sure to take a look at some of these links here. And last but not least, one of my favorite mouses, the MX Master uh, by Logitech. This thing is amazing. It looks pretty sweet. It's got a really cool like angular design. It can scroll up, down, left, right. It's got two scroll wheels here. And uh, overall, it's just really simple and it supports uh, Bluetooth and it supports the wireless dongle. So it's here you can actually switch around by pressing this little button here. You can go to, from one, two, or three different connections to three different computer systems. This particular mouse just happens to be really advanced and very, very ergonomic. So it just fits really nice in my hand, which is why I like it. So let's say you have a MacBook and uh, you want to play GTA 5 on your MacBook. Well, you can't because GTA 5 is only for Windows. That means you need to install Windows on your uh, MacBook um, or your iMac or Mac Mini, whichever other uh, Apple product you have. Um, so to do that, you have to use Boot Camp. Boot Camp is a software that's already on your uh, computer. F4 key will be search for Boot Camp type in boot, click on boot camp assistant, and basically just click next on pretty much all these prompts here, except for this area. You wanna get the latest Windows support software for Apple, and you want to create a Windows 8 or later install disk. So check everything you see here, I should be good to go. Ask you if you want to restart. Click yes. This will ensure that the drivers are fully applied. And there you are. Welcome to Windows 10. It's going to require you hours and hours of time to pretty much get all this done. So don't don't be afraid if you need to go back and take a look at the video again. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful at all, I highly encourage that you guys subscribe because uh, I make these videos for you guys 
and uh, I'm trying to grow the channel. So let's let's build a community together. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. And if you have any video requests um, or anything at all, just leave a comment below. And I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.